And now for something completely different. Hi guys, and uh, today we are going to do something very different, for me anyway. Mini Arts 116 scale Greek Hoplite. So let's take a look in the box and see what's there. A plastic bag with uh, only a couple of sprues and an instruction seat. So there's there's not a lot to get through. Just we'll spread that out and have a closer look. So there's uh, three sprues in the bag. One main sprue, which is obviously the larger one, and then two smaller ones. One with just the helmet pieces, one with the arms, the base, and the uh, decals. At first glance, everything looks to be very cleanly moulded. Legs are in four parts, uh, heads in three parts. There's some hair pieces there that you don't actually end up using if you put the helmet on. The shield and sword assembly with the scabbard and, and hilt, the breastplate and backplate, and the skirts that go with that. So uh, it looks reasonably clean, except for the skirts. We've had a little bit of flash on them, but that's easily cleaned up without too much trouble. The arms were good and the helmet piece were good, both on separate sprues. Uh, nothing too complicated there. Uh, two options for the uh, decals and the base, which is plastic and uh, hollow. And finally, the instruction sheet, which is really just two-sided. The front side contains the coloured view of the front and back of the figure with painting guide and part number. And the other side is a uh, sprue map. The build was very easy. I really enjoyed the larger parts. I think it was a big difference to a 135th scale figure and a combination of my bad eyes and big fat fingers made this uh, really easy to put together. Uh, so I quite enjoyed that process. Very simple and uh, not worth um, going into too much detail. I particularly like the detail of the head. I think it looks really good. There were a couple of fit issues where the joints didn't really come together all that well, but nothing that a little bit of putty didn't fix. I was concerned about how well the figure would stand on the base, so the hollow leg tended to um, give me an idea that uh, I could put something right in there and then fix that through the bottom of the base, and after thinking about that for a while, decided that a nut and bolt arrangement would uh, work quite well. So I took the top off the nut uh, with the Dremel and just narrowed it a little bit so it would fit comfortably in the leg and then wanted it as a very tight fit and as you can see it just screws in nicely at this stage. So after checking the fit, it's just a matter of using a two-part epoxy cement, uh, mixing that together in equal parts and then uh, carefully applying it to the top of the nut so it uh, made sure it made good contact with everything and then screwing it in very gently to the, um, into the leg. I was very careful to make sure I didn't get any glue residue in the thread because uh, I didn't want that um, dripping down and, and ultimately messing up the nut. And then it was just a matter of taking off the extra length of the um, bolt itself with the um, cutting tool, being very careful not to damage the thread again and just taking off any of the rough edges so that the nut would go on smoothly. As I said earlier, there were a few fit issues, but um, just used some putty and then very carefully sanded all that back down and, uh, with a very fine sander, and it's come up reasonably well. Because there was so much uh, exposed flesh, I did a base coat of flesh and uh, just tried to mix a few colours in to give it a darker tone as much as possible and then polished that back again uh, in a number of places because that actually exposed some more join issues that required some subsequent filling as well and then resprayed again with the same base colour flesh so it gave it a good solid coat in the finish. And from that point it was really just a matter of blocking out all the major colours and then slowly working my way through the detail. And I'll just show a little bit of that as we go along.
So while I was waiting for various parts of the, the painting to dry, I started working on the base as well, which was uh, really just a matter of trying to replicate the box art to a certain degree, and I uh, had to look up and down the garden for a nice flat sort of stone, uh, which I eventually found, and then positioned that and supported it with some milliput uh, modelling putty, and shaped all that together. You'll notice I put three toothpicks in the hole just to keep that open to stop any putty from clogging that up. And uh, the reason I did that was because if I put one solid object in there, I was scared it might get stuck with the three. I thought I could at least manipulate them and, and be able to get them out if it all went a bit uh, uh, sticky. And then I just used the toothbrush uh, when the putty was a little bit uh, more firmly set uh, to create some texture on the surface. And finally, just a series of different um, coloured washes to gradually build up some tone, earth tones in the, in the base. I made a little hook out of uh, wire to go into the scabbard so it could hang on to the belt that goes across the figure's chest, which is something that I had to make from scratch as well. I use the top of a wine bottle, the foil that goes on top of a wine bottle, to cut a thin strip and then base coated that and painted it the base colour to, to create the strap. The shield's a rather prominent part of the model, especially the front of the shield, so having done all the detail on the inside, I then base coated it with an off-white, a reasonably runny mixture. I wanted it to be thin because I did a couple of coats of this. And then to protect the interior, put some blue tack uh, firmly around that so I couldn't get any paint bleed back in over the detail. And then base coated it with the bronze, a couple of coats of bronze, and then the top coat of white again and the red around the edging. And then started to just rough it up to so expose some of the bronze that was underneath the top coat. And then worked on the detail around the edges. So it was a painstaking job to do the shield, but it was I think it was well worth it. And I'm reasonably happy with how it's come out for my first go at doing that sort of detail. The decal was very straightforward. Used some microset and microsol to um, make sure the, that it was nice and soft. And I just put a little dot of blue tech at the top of the shield so that uh, I could position the transfer accurately once I got it off the carrier paper. And by this stage there was only one piece left to do, which was the um, feathers on the helmet, the plume. And uh, I just wanted to rough that up a little bit on the top and the sides to make it look a little bit more realistic. There was a minor fit problem right at the very end when putting the shield on. The handle didn't quite reach the shield and just fixed that with a little bit of uh, melee put as well. And that's the model kit completed. So we'll have a bit of a slideshow for a couple of minutes just to have a look at the finished model. Uh, really enjoyable to put together, um, easy to make and uh, quite fun to paint. I really enjoyed it. And it has um, now created a desire in me to um, do more of these. So. Uh, Watch out for some more 116 scale kits in the future.
So that's it guys, thanks so much for watching and if you liked it, thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on uh, future postings. Thanks again, bye.